If you're looking for a big SUV, should you go for this 2021 Ford Expedition or wait for the refreshed 2022 Ford Expedition? Well, we're gonna go through a full review of this 2021 model and I'm gonna give you some snippets and the information I know about the 2022 model at the time of this video so you can decide which one you should go for. Regardless of which one you get, you'll get space and power and comfort. And I'm gonna give you a full detailed look at this one, but let's go ahead and get started. Real quick before we get started, my name is Nolan. I do full reviews like this every single week. So if you wanna see more videos like this and a variety of videos, be sure to subscribe down below. But also, if you wanna know more about the Ford Expedition, I've got a couple videos from older models in the description below with the King Ranch, the limited trim, etc with more details, so be sure to check those out. But let's jump into this one. Now let's take a look at the exterior details, and I'll be pretty brief because I've covered this before, and not much is different, but now Ford actually gives you a new trim level. It's the XL STX, which is cheaper than previously, and it deletes the third row, so you can drop the price a little bit. But compared to the 2022 model, the refresh coming, there's gonna be mild exterior tweaks, both in the front and the back. I haven't been able to see everything yet, but you decide whether or not you think it looks better. All the information I'm gonna tell you about the 2022 Expedition is from Ford Authority, and all the credit goes to them. So I'll put the link to the, to the uh, article and the pictures in the description below if you wanna check that out. And then looking right up front. So Ford actually gives you a little bit of different variations with the grills depending on the trim level. This is the limited trim, and halogen headlights are actually standard on this trim. We only have the LEDs because of a package that we have, but you've got the LED daytime running light that kind of runs from the grill on out. And you've got the quad beam. So you've got two headlights over there and two on the other side. Plus you've got LED fog lights now that we have the LED headlights. And the paint color on this Expedition is the Magnetic Metallic. It's this darker gray color. And we have a different package here, a Texas edition package that gives us these 22 inch wheels with some black inserts. You'll also see that mirror has a blinker in it. Plus it's even automatic dimming on this side. You can see a little bit of chrome accents on the door handle up above with the roof rack, even the running boards on the bottom, which I'll show you in a little bit. And this is a big vehicle. Dimensionally, it's 210 inches. The max goes up to 222 inches long. So it is definitely a long vehicle, but right in line with the Tahoe. And then in the back, Ford's gonna give you LED taillights as well with a red turn signal. And then I'll show you the cargo area in a second. You do have a spare tire mounted underneath of the vehicle. And speaking of under the vehicle, we have a fully independent rear suspension. So independent in the back, unlike the F-150, which is a solid axle in the back. And then there's even continuous damping for this suspension to give you the best combo of ride and handling. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Ford gives us one really cool feature back here. Actually, two pretty cool features. First of all, you don't always see this. There's a little touch right, little touch pad there to where you can actually lift up this glass. So if you just want to load stuff right here without opening the whole lift gate, you can do that. That's actually pretty nice. The other thing on the limited trim and up, you get the hands-free access. You just swipe your foot, you got the hands-free lift gate to open up. And back here, the difference between the regular Expedition and the Max Expedition, this is where you're gonna see the biggest difference. So if you need the most amount of space behind the third row, you're gonna to wanna to go for the Max. Now let's take a closer look at this cargo area. So check this out. This is an optional cargo management system. It doesn't come standard like this, but I put this shelf up because the shelf can actually be helpful when you open up that rear gate if you wanna have some items up here. This also has a little partition right there to help prevent stuff from rolling off. And you can lift this up out of here and do a few different things with it. So you can, I don't have it perfectly latched, but you can have it like that to separate stuff even if the third row's down. There's a few different things you can do with it, but this is an optional feature, or you can lay it flat. And as you saw, there was a little bit of storage underneath. And back here, there's about 13, or 19, sorry, 19 cubic feet. You've got a couple tie downs, you've got a light. And when you're not actually using this for your partitions, you could totally use that for a grocery bag or cargo net hook. You'll see there's also a 12 volt power outlet back there. And then you have power folding seats so you got power folding second and third row seats you don't have to hold the button you can just push it and they'll automatically go down and then you get over 50 cubic feet and i'll put the numbers on the screen but this is a nice really flat spacious area behind the second row one thing i really like is that you have a 40 20 40 split so you can fold the middle seat down and have a big center pass through 
just like that. And it's also really, really flat. And you get over 100 cubic feet when you have all of these seats folded down. I've got my car seat there. This is a massive area. And even if you get the max, you get about 121 cubic feet back here. So this is just enormous. And then when you're all done back here, if you grab a bunch of stuff, you got some gear, you don't want to push the button or anything, you can just swipe your foot again and boom, it'll go down. Compared to the 2022 models, I don't anticipate much changing back here, especially in terms of space. It should be about the same. Now Ford's going to give us the smart key, including remote start on here, and you can open up the rear lift gate as well. It's a pretty big bulky key fob, but it's not too bad. And Ford's smart key works like this. There's a couple little lines on the door handle you can push. The mirrors will power fold to lock it. The other nice thing is that there's actually sensors in the back door handles too. So all of the doors are smart key accessible, so you don't have to unlock it or anything like that. But Ford also gives you the touchpad. It's a keyless touchpad on the door. So that's really nice. You can lock it and unlock it and actually lock your keys in there, give somebody your code, then they can get in. But another nice thing, is that we have these fold down running boards on these top few trims of the Expedition to make it easy to get in and out. Now moving into the front seats, Ford gives you the entry exit system. So if you go ahead and start it up, you can have it programmed to have the steering wheel and the seat automatically move to your memory settings because we've got three position memory settings for the driver. The steering wheel is also heated and leather wrapped, so it is really nice to hang on to when it's cold out. And if you have mobility issues, there's a huge grab handle right here, right there, and for both of the back seats. Now let me give you a closer look at the front seats. And Ford actually did one thing that I absolutely hate for 2021. So these headrests used to be able to ratchet front to back to where it's not intrusively pushing your head forward. Now they're fixed. They only go up and down and they're a little bit annoying and intrusive. I've got to say it really kind of peeved me off when they removed that. But these are leather wrapped seats. They're perforated, so they're heated and they're ventilated. They've got really nice, soft, big bolsters on the, on the bottom and on the sides. The seats themselves are very comfortable and I loved them before they fixed the headrest. They're 10 way power adjustable. So you've got your, man, your regular tilt and height adjustment and two way lumbar support. And if you find a top trim level, the platinum, you'll see a little button in the middle, which will mean you'll have massaging seats, but you don't get massaging seats on this limited model. And space in here is very good. You've got the memory settings, like I said, heated, ventilated, so you're good to go with that. The only thing is these headrests are just annoying. And this isn't always the case, but the passenger side gives you uh, power adjustment with lumbar support, and it even has height adjustment as well. Now let's climb into the back seat. And one nice thing is that Ford gives you the same nice materials up on the door that you do with the rest of them. You've got a square cubby, a little cubby, and then big storage down here. So you're good for little snacks and drinks. One complaint though, is that on a lot of crossovers and SUVs nowadays, they have these manual lift up sunshades, but you don't see that on this Expedition. And like I said, with the front seats, you've got these nice big grab handles on both sides, so it's easy to get in. You can get bench seats or you can get captain's chairs, just depending on what you want with the Expedition and different trim levels, but you've got the same leather seats back here, and these seats are also heated. You just won't find ventilated seats in the rear. And then sitting behind myself, space-wise, I'm five foot nine, excellent knee space, excellent foot space. Even the middle is pretty flat, so you've got good middle passenger space. You've got all the plugins that you need, a regular USB and USB-C, a three-prong outlet, and your own automatic climate control back here, and even radio and volume controls. So that is pretty cool. Plus, you've got a couple of cup holders, and then there's a little storage area down below. And as you can see, my car seat easily fits even where I have the seat where I want. I just have it over there because when I have the entry exit system, this will automatically push back into the car seat. And another nice thing, overhead, you've got this optional panoramic roof in this limited trim. Very nice view for the back seat. And I can, of course, sit up tall with no problems whatsoever. And these seats can recline a long ways. So this is really nice. And there's one more thing, two more things. You've got air conditioning vents overhead on each side. And then Ford has this thing called the center slide. So if you want to hook up a car seat in the middle, it can slide all the way up to where you can have easy access to your kids. If you're in the front, you can easily get to them, talk to them, whatever you need to do. 
And before I climb into the third row, just for reference, I just moved this second row seat all the way forward and I can still sit here semi comfortably. So let's see how much space we have back there. Now getting into the third row, there's not a push button or anything like that. Super simple for children to push. There's a handle right there. And then with a little bit of effort, you can push that seat up out of the way. And you've got a pretty large entry to get back there. Now again, five foot nine behind myself, I can sit here behind this seat forward or the seat all the way back, I can still sit there without my head or my knees pushing into it. You've got cup holders and you've got USB ports back here with little storage areas. And then I can sit here without my head touching and these seats can actually recline. But if I recline, then my head touches, but at least that's an option. So adults can sit back here just fine and kids will probably have a blast in all the space in this expedition. Now as we hop inside, the interior is going to be one of the areas of change for 2022. One thing in particular is it's rumored to have a large screen over 15 inches just like the Mach-E and the Ford Lightning and probably some other small tweaks. So if that's one of the big things and if you don't like this little screen, 8 inch screen, then maybe you'd want to go with the 2022 model. But we have push button start. Let's go ahead and start it up. I'm gonna kind of breeze through this because I've covered this in detail in more videos, but you've got this large digital display in the middle with a lot of information that you can change through. Trip computers, things like that. Heated, leather wrapped steering wheel. You've got adaptive cruise control functions on here and all the necessary controls that you need. Over on the door, you've got nice materials up here if you wanna rest your arm up there. Soft armrest, that's really big here as well. Every window is automatic one touch, memory settings down there, and then you've got a huge storage area in the bottom. My bottle fits, but it does get squeezed a little bit. You can even fold down the third row headrests if they're in your way, and then your lighting controls. Pedal adjustment, you can even adjust the pedals closer or further away. So that's really nice if you have somebody really tall or really short. Then the materials up above, you've got soft material up here. You've even got a padded, or rubberized liner, that's a good little storage area there. And then up here, we've got an eight inch screen. So this is the standard screen. There's nothing special about this screen or no extra large screen like there is on a lot of vehicles. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard. However, they are not wireless right now. I would guess that they will be wireless on 2022. So you have to be plugged in for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But this has the upgraded B&O sound system, as you can see right there. That's on available on the upper trim levels and it does sound pretty nice. If we go into reverse, we also have a 360 degree camera, which is optional on this limited trim with the package. So you can change the views to like a trailering view for a hitch line. Otherwise you have this 360 degree view and it's not adjustable. You can't see different sides of the vehicle up close or anything like that, but you can push this camera button up at the top and access it at any time. You have some physical controls down here, like your volume knob, tuning knob, and some shortcuts and even seeking. You've got a trailer backup control knob right here. So you do have Ford's trailer backup assist, which is nice because you can literally turn this knob and move the boat or whatever you want anywhere you need to. Trailer brake controller, which is excellent to see integrated in right there. Dual zone climate control is standard plus actually tri-zone because you have a third zone for the back seat that you saw earlier. And check this out. There's a wireless charging mat down there. It's a little bit annoying to get your phone in and out of if you have a larger phone. You've got two USB ports here, a regular and a type C. And then you kind of have this, you know, trim piece around here. It's a lot better than piano black. You've got this turn dial shifter. You have the drive mode selections here. We'll go through that in the test drive. Two high, four, four wheel drive automatic and four wheel drive low and then the enhanced park assist. So you can actually get Ford's automatic parking for parallel and perpendicular parking. The cup holders are good size. I've got no complaints with that. Plugs are always good to see. You've got a 12 volt power outlet. You've got an extra cubby above the glove box. And then you have a locking glove box that's good size down there. Ford gives you an automatic dimming rear view mirror and we have garage controls on the visor. The visor is the kind that will slide out to block the sun and you still get a sunglass holder. Those are starting to go away in vehicles nowadays. Plus this panoramic roof, which is optional, this dual pane roof, which is nice. 
And at night, we've got ambient lighting in various areas of just one color. It's like a sea green on the limited trim and up, but it looks nice and you can turn it off or turn it up higher. And it just looks good in this expedition. Now under the hood for 2021, nothing changes. And as far as I know, nothing changes for 2022. It's possible you get a little power bump, but the engine and transmission will probably stay the same. It's this 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost engine with a 10 speed automatic transmission. And there's two variants of this engine. We've got this regular one with 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque, but the Platinum trim can give you 400 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque. Now compared to the Tahoe, power numbers are very competitive. The Tahoe can give you a little bit more horsepower, but this can give you more torque if that's what you're looking for, depending on the engine. But the standard option here is definitely more power and torque than the regular Tahoe. And miles per gallon of this 4x4 model is definitely not ideal with 22 miles per gallon max on the highway, but you can get up to 24 with a two-wheel drive model. And one of the perks of getting a, an Expedition or a bigger SUV like this is the towing capacity. You can tow with this 4x4 model 9,200 pounds. All right, let's get rolling on the test drive in this Ford Expedition. Now I have driven the Expedition a couple of times before this, but obviously I haven't driven the newest 2022 model at the time of this video, so I don't know if there's any changes. But one thing to know about the Expedition is that it's comfortable. It's a pretty smooth ride with a little bit of a caveat here. I'll talk about that later, but it's powerful. You've got all the power that you need. The turbo, the twin turbo, with this engine gives you power really quick so as soon as you put the pedal down you don't really have to floor it it's just going to give you some power right off the bat and that's one perk of turbocharged engines so just a little bit of pedal and you start to get a good amount of boost pretty quick without having to really floor it or get the rpms up high so city driving is great and that would also be very beneficial with towing now, one thing about ride comfort I've got to say is that there's two things about it. So we have massive 22 inch wheels and typically the larger the wheels are, the more bumpy the ride is. And this is still a comfortable, smooth ride, but there's times where you feel almost like little tiny bumps, like you feel things a little more in here than you probably would on uh, an expedition with different wheels, smaller wheels. but. Something to note if you're looking around, it's still comfortable and a smooth ride, but on bumpy roads, roads, roads with curves and bumps and turns, this feels very floaty. Like you don't feel secure to the ground sometimes. Um, and that's one of my complaints with it. But for the most part, most of you won't have a problem with it or any trouble at all. The steering feedback is decent too. For a big vehicle, it's lightweight, so it's not hard to maneuver this and park it, but taking corners, you really start to feel the weight of this vehicle and the size of it, which is normal, but cornering, you can start to really feel that. I'll put it in sport mode in a little bit so you can see, but day-to-day -day driving, I like the cubbies. The controls are easy to reach, no fuss with that. The big digital display in front of you has a bunch of information that can be controlled with your steering wheel also. Like I said, with the visibility, the pillar back there is pretty massive. So if I turn around and look, I mean, it's kind of hard to see over my shoulder, but I'm gonna put it in sport mode. You have an eco mode, sport mode, off-road towing mode, but we're in sport mode right now. Let me get up this hill a little bit. So we're just cruising along. Let's go ahead and put the pedal down. And it, it, there's a couple times where it lurched a little bit, but this gets you up to speed pretty quick. And it holds the RPMs in sport mode. And most of you will probably never put it in sport mode. You don't ever really have to put it in sport mode. I'm gonna put it back in normal mode. But high speed cornering, or even moderate speed cornering. It's a little uneasy in here just because you're sitting up tall, you've got some body lean with it, but it's responsive, this engine. Passing power is excellent. The 10 speed transmission can be a little bit jerky sometimes. I've had a different experience in all of the expeditions with the transmission. It's a learning transmission, I believe, so it probably will change and adapt a little bit to how you drive. Going around corners, 
an adaptive cruise, this has Ford Copilot 360. So you've got the radar cruise control, you've got the lane keeping system, but it won't be a lane centering technology. I would guess that that will be on the 2022 model, but it's not on this one. I have a demonstration with the Ford Explorer. Uh, be sure to look for that in the description below, a full demonstration on how that system works. Aside from the little bit of bumps in the ride and the floaty feeling of it, I like it. I like driving this around. It's big. You've got good ride height, good visibility. It's pretty quiet. There's a little bit of wind noise that sneaks in. We do have laminated glass here, so you've got the double pane glass. So that should help. I'm going to get on a rough textured road here and you'll get an idea of road noise. This also has auto stop start, which can be shut off with that. It's a little bit, a little bit annoying, but you can turn it off. I don't know if 2022 models will have that or not. But that's just partial pedal, not floored. And you hear some engine noise. It's not the big V8 that you get out of the Tahoe, but it doesn't sound too bad. Now we're up to speed. And road noise on a surface like this is actually pretty good. Um, this road noise was pretty similar to what it was when I was on the interstate at interstate speeds. And that's usually not the case. Usually this is significantly louder than that. So this was actually pretty impressive. And I'll put my decibel, decibel ratings down below. So road noise is good. It's quiet enough for most people to converse with other people in the cabin. But let's go ahead and wrap things up on this expedition. Now to wrap things up on this Ford Expedition, compared to the 2022 model, there's gonna be some tech upgrades, maybe some power upgrades, but space and practicality are gonna be basically the same. And if this one's not big enough for you, you can go for the Expedition Max, where you really get a lot of cargo space in the back of this vehicle. And it's already a big vehicle. So if the updated exterior styling tweaks and the big screen potentially on the inside are something that you really want, definitely wait for that 2022 model. But even with this 2021 model, Ford actually gave you a new lower priced XL STX trim level and removed the third row seats. So that's pretty interesting. But otherwise, 2021 is not much different than the previous models. But let me know what you think of this Ford Expedition down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, a thumbs up is very helpful for me. I truly appreciate it. Hope you have a great day.